plugged it in, and but I don't seem to be getting any power through it at all. So I have to tip it upside down and start tracing. Yeah. Hey, Linda, you got in too. Awesome. Why would Where it... is Linda? It's a little dark. I see Linda's hair. Yeah, I see hey. Linda's hair. Oh, there she is. Morning, Linda. Well, this is great. I went ahead and hit the stream button on YouTube, so we are live. Everybody put your pants back on. <laughs> I can't. We can hear you now, Linda. Oh, yeah. I'm on now. I I had the sound turned down. Ah, okay. How's everybody? Real good. Real good. I'm here in Alaska. Everyone else is in their mutual respectable places you see california arizona canada yeah <laughs> and we're we're, been, we're actually calmed down in the temperature we we've been hitting plus 30s we're now uh at below 20 right now so, uh, so it's a nice comfortable day for a change smoky but comfortable smoky. it hey, feels Fred. really dreary and cold because of the smoke but yeah look red Fred's here with us Linda, now. What, Linda, what country are you in? I'm in Green Valley. And so nobody's in San Carlos. This is the San Carlos Computer Club coming to you, to you from everywhere but San Carlos. Right. <laughs> that's awesome. Is anyone is anyone that's on in San Carlos? No, that's that's Cheryl's point. Is none of us are in San Carlos right now. <laughs> We need somebody from Europe to tune in. Hey, that's right. Then so we'll be the International like Computer Club. We're almost yes, the international. We're international now. We're global. The Global Computer Club. There you are. Yeah, the United States hasn't hasn't uh, taken us over yet. We still are independent. <laughs> So, you know, they have a computer club in Green Valley, but they charge you to belong. <laughs> well, where's our 20 pesos been going every week? Yeah, well, yeah, Bill, where is it? I haven't seen it. <laughs> uh, where, where have you been? We've been what have you been doing it, with it? <laughs> we've been sending it to tequilas. To Russ. Russ has got it all. Russ has got it all. <laughs> yeah. That's right. <laughs> I'm just using bill pay. <laughs> it's going to Ross. Well, it's funny because the people, the people that need to be on here aren't on here. Right. Well, we need, we need, we need to change the name of it from a computer club to a BS club. <laughs> hey, that's not my fault. That's your fault, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I just opened well, the list of topics here. <laughs> well, in, I was trying in, to add something to that list, and it wouldn't let me. In so. Chester's case, it's a medical checkup uh, club. <laughs> I see. Yeah, I've really. Enjoyed. How are you doing today, Chester? I'm doing. I'm, I'm doing. I'm doing good. I'm getting stronger every day. <laughs> good. I was going to say, I've really enjoyed Chester's medical technology briefs with us. I've found them very useful, very interesting, inciting. Absolutely. I, I didn't know you could pull a kidney out of a 5 8 hole. <laughs> <laughs> or, or trade a valve well, by think, sticking it up I, the I artery like that. A, I think... I think they put in a special, a special, I don't know what to call it, but a container that they were able to put the kidney in the container and take it out. But I have no idea. Ah, there you go. <laughs> anyway, it's gone. And uh, I'm doing well. I'm still using a walker, probably will for many years to come, assuming there are many years. Hmm. Yeah. I do have a computer issue whenever we get around to it. Oh, yeah. great. Well, and you know I have what? a question about that. 
It is that time. It is the San Carlos Computer Club. I'm Scott Stimson from International Computer Solutions, brought to you live from Anchorage, Alaska, <laughs> where I'm spending the next month helping a buddy of mine put his house together. We've done inventory already, and it turns out no one is in San Carlos. And hence, we are now forever known as the International Computer Club. <laughs> We've got the United States, Canada, and Mexico. No, Mexico's not represented and at all here. Alaska is a world of its own. Yeah. Alaska it's... is a world of its own, so. <laughs> Alaska's a state that gets treated hey, as playing. a territory. <laughs> What's that, Linda? Hey, I'm trying to get everybody on the screen, but uh, it's not happening. You have to go to your change layout. I've got well, it. See, I don't see that here. I got a new, you know, I got a new tablet. Mm -hmm. It doesn't it. offer. It doesn't <laughs> offer that change they layout. It a while ago, Linda, and it's not over in the right anymore. It's in the middle, like it's right beside the hang up, the three dots. No, I don't have that. Oh, I have a new. A brand new Samsung tablet, and mm -hmm. I still have the same old stuff there. And I have everybody's picture down the side, but it keeps disappearing. Well, okay, I got everybody. Now I just have Scott. Oh, so you must be looking at, you must have me penned or something. Because I'm just moving my view around. I don't oh. know. Like I now don't know how to fix this. Now my screen should be me plus you guys. Six boxes to the right, to the left, to the right. To the left. Yeah, you're to in the, the top corner. Then SC, S3C's in the bottom right corner. That's our branding. Now I have everybody, but that's it. And we see a silhouette of you. Like a Japanese puppet see the play. Top of your head. Well, you know why? Because I'm sitting and the screen is behind me with the light. Yeah. Maybe if I move. Maybe if I move. Let me see now. Yeah. We still just see the top of your head. Oh, with that, that. That's better. she's getting it lined up. <laughs> yeah, that's better. I've never used the tablet up for the computer club before but it seems to be working okay so far now, now i lost you, you guys are you in chrome yeah okay mm -hmm. now i keep going off well you know what this new tablet it has a very thin screen around it and if you don't touch it just right <laughs> it goes off okay maybe i should Get on my computer instead. <laughs> I'll go switch to my computer. <laughs> well, learning something new. You it's nice to see somebody else has technical difficulties besides Scott. Yeah, I feel in good company now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm switching off. I'll be back. Scott, did you fly up to Alaska? Yes. Yeah, we actually did something I'd never done before. We took a, a, a direct flight. Direct flight from Phoenix to, to Anchorage. It took us about six hours. Wow. And it was full. Just elbow to elbow. Everybody wearing masks. I actually had a disconcerting experience with a flight attendant. He came to ask me my drink order and I had my mouth down because I was eating something. And we start talking and I go to put my, my mask up. I'm like kind of got headsets since I'm putting my mouth because she's right, right there. And she goes, oh, honey, don't worry about it. I don't care about that. I'm like, wonderful. 
Thanks. <laughs> You're just in charge. I can't. Oh, but reassuring. <laughs> yeah. And I had a oh, lot sure? of that sentiment on the plane. Like we had people walking down the aisles and they weren't worrying about whether they had their masks on or not. We had people sitting in aisles eating and they just, I mean, it was like they had forgotten. They had taken off the mask and didn't bother to put it back on. I don't want to be that guy, but at the same time, we've been watching this Delta vi um, variant. It was a accounted for something like 15% uh, of all new infections, and in less than two weeks, it now accounts for 40% of all infections in the United States. So I'm not ready to be so casual. <laughs> well, hey, Jim, good to see you. There's, there's an unknown. <clears throat> Excuse me. There is an unknown that's uh, coming out of the situation where six members of the Texas Democratic Party flying together in an airplane have all come down with the new virus, but, uh, but they had all been vaccinated. So they're now, they don't know the extent to which the new virus can be obtained by those that have been vaccinated, but they're thinking it may be up to 30%. So uh, there is an issue out there that could affect all of us. Yeah, Chester, I think you're right. I think the number I heard was was that this variant is causing the vaccine to be 60% effective instead of the 95% effective. Yeah, that's what I've heard, yeah. I also haven't heard of anybody getting severely sick that was vaccinated. But there's still... Well, I think that yeah, they, they've not commented on the Tex the Democratic Texans that were in the plane together. They haven't commented on how sick or not sick they have been. But I've also heard the fact that no one has died as, that have had the vaccine. Yeah, they're, they're basically saying that we've protected, um, we're protected from death and serious illness. But yeah, who knows? What, what still amazes me is the number of people that I run into that have not been vaccinated and don't want to be. I yeah. just I find that hard to believe. Yeah, yeah, I agree. The, you've heard on the news, I'm sure they've had the same talking points going around, that the pandemic belongs to the unvaccinated now. Mm -hmm. They're the ones that are in the most serious risk. I'm nervous because uh, BB has just gotten her first vaccination and she won't get the second dose until the, the seventh. And this, this Delta virus is creeping up through us right during that time period. Well, what about you, what about you yes, Scott? She's, she got her second vaccine. This is how slow Mexico is going. So she was in the 40 and older group. I was in the 50 and older. She likes to make shit. She likes to give me shit for being an old man. <laughs> but she has only now, yesterday, gotten her second dose of Pfizer. That's, that's how slow Mexico's moving. They earlier, uh, I want to say about two months ago, about the time I was getting vaccinated for the with my first one, <laughs> Sonora was vaccinating their teachers with the Johnson and Johnson. And so all the teachers are supposed to have already been vaccinated with the Johnson and Johnson, but the rate they're going, kids are not going back to school vaccinated. Well, you know, they're on, they've got restrictions now again in San Carlos, they shut the beaches and something else. Yeah, that's what Yuya was telling me. She She's like, hey, it feels like you guys got out of here just in the nick of time because they're starting to shut things down again. They've they've started having deaths that they attribute to the to the Delta variant. And, Is she coming uh, from Alaska? No, no, she stayed behind. She's got some steady work there. I we were only I was only gonna be up here for a month doing this. 
And so it was just too disruptive. But the kids have just been going nuts in the heat and nothing to do. And so I brought them with me so they could visit their grandparents and friends and get out of that weather. You know, Yuya is a lifetime San Carlos person. She's born and raised in Wymus. She's happy to be there in that heat. Whereas us, us Alaskans and half-breeds are dying in the heat. <laughs> well, everybody rejoiced they had rain yesterday. Oh, that's excellent. We've been having rain every day in Green Valley. We haven't had rain for over uh, 33 days now on are Vancouver you, Island. Jim, are you guys still having human killing temperature highs? No, no it's gone, gone back down to uh, sort of a reasonable thing, you know, uh, 20 degrees. <laughs> so we're uh, we're pretty happy with that. But uh, there's no rain. We haven't, we, we have... A couple of Alberta, overcast days. Alberta, BC are burning up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, any, any. Uh, the mainland of BC is is in really big trouble. They've got uh, fires close to urban areas and all sorts of things. Town of Asoyos is quite nervous right now. Mm, well, it's really? a city. It's a city of Asoyos, you know. Hey. You know, I, oh, I understand ahead. Vancouver Island has created a problem for the United States. I heard on the news that Canada is prohibiting the cruise ships going to Alaska from stopping at Vancouver Island in order to comply with the Jones Act. Yeah. And therefore, uh, Alaska is going to suffer greatly from lack of tourist trade. Yeah, well, they, they ended up... Uh, they, the uh, federal government in the United States uh, allowed them to, uh, to skip that and still uh, still be in compliance because they're foreign ships that are going from from uh, a United States port Seattle to um, uh, to Alaska and uh, they, they were allowed to do it on a temporary basis I, but you know you never know like when things go, go uh, temporary then they sometimes get permanent you know because it was only the law that was making the cruise ship industry in uh, Victoria really a viable thing because it's so similar to uh, Seattle in so many ways. Although people do like to put another country on their, their schedule, you know, or tick a, tick a box from their, their travels, you know? Yeah, they, but they did get a they're, waiver. They're talking about opening it up again. Yes. Oh, I they, was just gonna say they- don't they, have their, their, Oh, go ahead, Jim, I'm sorry. Yeah, they got a waiver for, uh, for going into Canada. They don't have to go in here anymore. But, well, that's good news. Yeah. Well, it is, especially because the uh, uh, because of Alaska, they were suffering. Victoria, we we haven't even got the um, Americans coming across the border. Uh, they've just changed that. They've just opened the border to uh, vaccinated Americans now at the at the the um, ground crossings. You know, August ninth. Yeah. 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 So, hey, what about, well, the. We club? I'm sorry, Linda. What was that? Have we started the club? Yeah, we've started. We're just bullshitting, though. <laughs> oh. I, <laughs> I, I hope you guys brought some topics other than COVID and temperatures. I did send I, out uh, a, a document of potential topics that we could, possible topics that we could use today. And I just. Stuck yeah, I have I, a link in the chat, but I'm going to let Chester do his topic first. <laughs> Go ahead, Chester. <laughs> well, you know, I've I've discussed before this uh, one the one 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 senior moment here. Uh, Microsoft's cloud, um, the OneDrive, the Microsoft OneDrive. 365 yeah. subscription service. Yes. And I had the 365 subscription, so uh, Sunday I thought I would set up so that OneDrive and <clears throat> could back up my computer in addition to the external hard drives. OneDrive I'm already paying for, so why not let them back it up? So yeah, yeah. I set it up, and, <clears throat> and OneDrive took a substantial amount of documents. I couldn't keep them on my computer. 
Yeah, Chester, it sounds like you had you you didn't get it configured in that backup mode that we were talking about in the in the settings there. Well, I I, I went to the backup settings and uh, and I tried, but obviously it didn't work. Yeah, cuz there's I you can use the OneDrive as space in the cloud and it's a separate location. But I I got you on that when I went to the backup, they had uh, three different areas to back up, and you clicked on them. Yep. One yep. backup was one backup was was your documents. Okay. The other backup was pictures, and the third backup was your desktop. So I clicked all three of those yeah. to be backed up, and they did back them up for sure. But they kept them, and I had to go into OneDrive to get my documents. Not everything went in there. But uh, the, my documents went in there, and, and my and my uh, banking program. So I, I, I did exactly what you said. Yeah, I yeah, that the, sounds bizarre that you would have that experience. Well, you know, I could go into my, go into the uh, OneDrive and and pull out my documents, but I couldn't. Get them back into my computer. Like I don't your, know. your documents, your desktop, your photo, those folders yeah. should be synchronizing to the OneDrive, and you should be seeing identical files on your hard drive as what's in the OneDrive. Well, when I went to my documents on my computer, for example, I went offline. And so I went oh, okay. to my documents. Yeah. Go ahead. I went to my documents in my computer and they're not there the folder is empty so if you're if you are making this transition maybe what's happened is it hasn't been organized correctly yet what happens well. is that when they're on the OneDrive, but they're not quite on your computer then the the documents will appear with little clouds next to them if you're online if you're oh. offline they won't appear at all when they are successfully synchronized between the two locations, there should be a green check mark next to each one of your icons, each one of your your documents. Yep, that works. But when you go offline, you find out they're not on your computer. So everything that has a green check mark should be on your computer when you go offline. That, that didn't happen. Really weird. And the, and the whole check mark was there. But if you click on it, you, it just says empty empty folder. Well, Chester, if you want, if you're concerned about it, I could take a look at it maybe later this week. No, I, I've piddled with it enough. Uh, <laughs> okay, well, it's supposed to be easy. I'm going to use my external hard drive. <laughs> well, what I can say is that we've got my father set up with it, and it's wonderful. I, I don't know if I told you the experience he had talking to Costco Technical Support. But they talked him into formatting his computer, and he lost everything. Oh, and wow. He was freaking out because he couldn't see the documents. They weren't there. And I got into it remotely. I signed him back into his Microsoft account. And slowly but surely, all the documents came right back to where they had originally been. Well, I'm curious. If he goes offline, is his document still on his computer? Yes, but again, only the documents that have that have the green check mark next to them. In this case, everything is in that format. But if there was something that that had not had a chance to synchronize, then it wouldn't be available. You know what this conversation's reminding me of is that there have been settings on the Macintosh and on the Android that allow you to save space on your computer. I wonder if there's some setting like that that I'm not aware of at the moment. If if there were, the way the Macintosh and your Android devices do it is that they look at how much space you have available in your local your local device and then only allow those files to come to your local device that you're using currently. So specifically like on, on the Macintosh, uh, anything that you've used within the last 30 days will remain on your computer. But if you haven't touched it in 30 days, 
then it will offload it from your computer to give your computer more space, maintaining it in the cloud. The next time that you go for that document, of course, you'd have to be online. But if it's been over 30 days, it's actually not on your computer anymore. And you'd click on it and it would take a little bit of time to get it into your computer. And then you'd be able to work on it. And then it would be available to you for 30 days of inactivity. If you were to continue to work on it, it would just stay in your computer. And it, Scott, I, I will, I tell you what, I, I, I can't do it today, but sometime in the near future, I'll give you an email, we'll set up a time and let you come into my computer and see what you can do. Yeah, because that just doesn't sound like the right experience at all. And I'm curious if it's just a misconfiguration. And is this this feature that I'm describing, I know very well in the Mac platform, but uh, I've not been, oh. I mean, I'm digging through the settings right now very quickly, seeing if I can find something similar. Because it would make sense if it was something like that that was going on. Save space and download files when you use them. I found it. On the very first setting, the first page of settings in OneDrive. Can I show you this? Here we go. Can you can you guys see that? No. Very small. Yeah. Well, if I pin yours, then it comes bigger, but... Well, right in the middle of my screen is the OneDrive settings. It's the first page. It's the first tab. It says settings, and all the way at the bottom, it says files on demand. And so, Chester, I would check and see if that's selected. If there's a check mark in files on demand, then Windows will be trying to do the thing I'm describing from the Macintosh. If it's check marked, the option is save space and download files as you need them. And it's the micro Microsoft equivalent of what I was just describing. If you find you have a check mark in there, then that would probably explain why you're having that experience. If you go offline, you don't have any files. And I'd be happy to take a look at it just let me know when it works for you, Chester. Will do, because I, I hate to just give up on a technology. <laughs> well, and the beauty of us shifting our thinking into these terms, especially when you're paying for these services, subscription services, is you can quite literally move to another device and bring that experience with you. All that stuff you were doing just comes over to that other device. Well, I was hoping to be able to transfer everything into my laptop, which I only use when I'm traveling, and that's not very often anymore. I, but, uh, I've I got a, to... a customer using that that tech that technique to maintain the exact same files on their computers in San Carlos and their computers in in Green Valley, and they go back and forth between those two locations, and they have computers in both locations. But they've got good internet in both spaces, so it's very easy to maintain <coughs> that 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 same environment in both locations. That's, that's all I have today. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I have another camera here that is not working. Turn it off. So does anybody else, has anybody else brought some tech topics for today? I'm really surprised my parents haven't gotten in here. But you know what's happened here, and I'm sure they're dealing with it, is uh, their refrigerator died over the weekend. Don't you, don't you love that when the refrigerator dies Friday evening? <laughs> we're fortunate that we're a bed and breakfast because we've got freezers and refrigerators all over the house. And so we had to quickly unload the huge fridge into all these little mini fridges and it tucked around, tucked away around the house. But uh, of course we couldn't even, they wouldn't even begin to be ready to help us with the problem until today. So I'm sure that's what they're dealing with right now. Is Paul aware that he has a buzzard in the place of his face? 
<laughs> oh, what are you doing to that bird? Under the buzzard's wing. I'm going to get another R rating, on, another another adult rating on this YouTube video. <laughs> That's right. The cruelty to the animal thing. <laughs> That's right. Oh, it's because, I mean, the buzzard is there. I put it on. But what has happened is my uh, laptop has decided to have the camera work. So my external camera was covering my face. So okay. now I moved it. So my loose wires have reconnected. <laughs> but yes, I have the, the uh, Mexican turkey right behind me there. <laughs> Scott, when you're talking about fridges and um, finding small ones in the bed and breakfast in our on our uh, property here, we have two motorhomes and an RV trailer that each have fridges in them. So our main one in the house, we would have three backups at the moment. Yeah. So. No, that, that would be four, dear. We have the little uh, the. Oh little yes, fridge. we have the, we have a little bar fridge that we used to use until we got the big one. So for a while there, we were in one little fridge, and now we have like four, five. <laughs> so. Is that a his and a her RV? <laughs> oh well, it's a story. <laughs> That's a great idea, more. Chester. You you guys should just convoy wherever you're going. It's like bringing two apartments. <laughs> we we have way more vehicles than we have drivers at the moment. But uh, both of our grandchildren drove the new Jeep yesterday. So <laughs> is it a brand new Jeep? Oh, it's a 2007 Jeep, but oh, it came attached to the second motorhome that we bought. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, a we case of, it's a case of it followed me home. Mom, can I keep it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The grandson that just got his learner's permit believes that it should be his and that he would like to work it off. Papa told him he'd be 40 before he finished paying for it at 25 cents an hour, but he feels that he should get minimum wage. So, you know, so we're under negotiations. <laughs> well, do we uh, have any other topics? Uh, I, well, I, I was wondering, oh. I had one from last week um, when I kept bleeping in and out of the meeting because of my stupid internet connection, which is the second topic I'll bring up. Um, his name just left me. <laughs> Somebody was telling us last week about an app that he has on his phone that gives him a, another number. Oh, was that Fred? Was that you? No, no. It was the guy that used to work for IBM. Oh, oh Dave. Dave said that. Thank you, Dave. Dave was telling us we were talking about getting an AT&T um, Canada, Mexico, US and uh, Judy said, I do, don't want to buy it in Mexico because then I have a Mexico number. Right. And he said, all you need to do is get this plum. I think he called it iPlum. Yeah, very good. I, I did not remember it, but that's the correct one. I it plum. just came to me at the same time as Dave. But anyway, so iPlum is supposedly a website and, and or an app that you pay $5 a month and it gives you a local phone number that people can phone and it will ring on your whatever phone you have. Um, and I wondered, I wanted to find some more information about it, but um, sounds like nobody else found it either. So, <laughs> Well, I've looked at it before. And it's a service it's very, uh, that feels very similar to something like a magic jack on your phone. Mm -hmm. It gives you a phone number and you use an app and then you can forward your calls so that, so that when, you're, when you're calling out, you know, when you're receiving calls, you can receive, you've got a number, you've got a US number that you can receive. It just in integrates with your phone. I think what Dave was saying is the issue is sometimes when he calls out, the caller ID is his Mexican number, even though he's calling out through iPlum. I think that was his. So own. is that like a call forwarding service, or is that um, like I don't understand Magic Jack? Is it an app? Is it a phone? I'm explain it. Go okay. ahead, Linda. A lot of people 
Lots of people are saying hello about a magic jack. Okay, so the magic jack, you get it and you plug it into a strip. It's plugged into a phone. Well, the only problem is you can't hear because they have the headphones on. And that's your main number. And then you also have it on your cell phone. Okay. So, yeah. so it's an app. So then it's when you want to call out on it and you're on your cell phone, you just click on the Magic Jack app and make your telephone calls. But every a lot of people down in San Carlos have have that. Uh, and then you have a U.S. phone number or a Canadian phone number. Now, is the Magic Jack, you say you plug it into your computer. Is it a telephone? Is it, is no. it like a headset, handset? What is it? Oh, what are you? Do you want, I, I can unplug mine and I'll show it to you, okay? Yeah. yeah okay. You, and the important part here is that with the Magic Jack, you don't need the hardware. You've got the service and then they have an app so you can use your cell phone as your phone. <clears throat> And so you don't have to physically have any hardware connected to use Magic Jack. And that's that's where this is a really similar comparison. iPlum doesn't have hardware. It's all virtual. Okay, and so it's so just it an app. Like this. Yeah, Linda. Oh. Looks like this. Yeah. It, it, has a little, it has a little plug. It, uh, here. It plugs into a strip. Then it plugs into your modem and it plugs into a separate telephone. So you have a separate telephone. So you have to have something uh, as in a telephone or could you use like an iPad, some sort of a computer? A bit? Can well, you do video calls on it or just telephone calls? Now, say that again. I didn't hear you. Is it audio only or is it audio video? No, it's audio only, and you can text message on it. Oh. Hmm. So you can get international calling on it. You pay extra money for that. Other than that, the calls are free to the U.S. and Canada. Oh, okay. So, so a lot of people like to get down in San Carlos. You, a lot of people have their phone number. You can choose your phone number. You can choose your area code. Um, you know, a lot of people down in San Carlos will, will have a magic jack with the area on. code from their home phone, from their Need home. It. Yeah. Headphones. And then you, and then you put the app on your, your uh, cell phone and you can make calls from it. Hmm. Down in Mexico, a lot of people can't call their bank. They can't call social security. They can't call Medicare if they have questions. So they use their magic jack and it makes you look like you're calling from the US. So Scott, you put the link in and it says it's a number one rated mobile virtual line. Right. So magic jack is the same kind of thing. It's a mobile virtual telephone line. Uh, no, it's, it's connected to the internet. So it's an internet phone line. Okay. Correct. It's an internet phone line. It used to be, yep. it used to be years ago. You see the end here. The problem isn't listening. You can plug it in your laptop, but then you got to leave your laptop on all on. the time and you can't get but any right calls. Now it's muted. Mm. Oh, actually, okay, it's now you don't need to do that anymore. Now it comes with an adapter. It just plugs into a strip and the lights are on and then you just attach it to your modem and attach it to your phone. Oh. So it's but, on all the time like a regular telephone and people can call you on that. But when you say attach it, are you doing a, a um, Wi-Fi attachment or, or with wires? Well, it's got a plug and in the end of the in the end of the magic jack is a phone a phone plug yeah. and an internet plug. Oh, there you go. So I don't know if you can't, it's hard to see it. Oh yeah, now I can see it. Okay. Yeah. So one one goes into your little telephone and the other goes into your modem. Good. It works perfect. I mean, I've had mine, when it first came out, I've had mine at least 15 years. We've had like three different uh, Magic Jacks. And when you buy it, like at Walmart or any of them, you get your first year free. 
So basically, you're paying for the, the service and not the unit. The, right. The Magic Jack, as well as Vonage, Vonage is very expensive. I don't recommend Vonage. Yes. But I always referred to it as the spouse's friend because most of my customers would have one person that was really into computers and the other person, it was all their thing. They don't do anything with it. You'd go ask them, whether it's the wife or the husband, somebody was the computer person and the other person was not. And this was like, you could provide somebody with a normal phone. They didn't have right. to learn an app. They didn't have to, they didn't have to do something on a tablet. They could just pick up a handset and make a phone call and receive phone calls and make voice, have voice ma mail. And so in that respect, it's great. But that has nothing to do with iPlum because iPlum is the other side of this, which right. is what Magic Jack would allow you to do is have an app on a smartphone. And so the iPlum is kind of like everything Linda's describing without the hardware. Right. So, but you, you can get this also for just your cell phone, but most people like to have it in their house. I and enjoyed the, using yeah. Magic Jack by having it in the office, and then I yeah. installed the app on a variety of different smartphones in our life, So and they right. would all ring at the same time. And the other thing that everyone uses is WhatsApp. Now, WhatsApp is strictly on your cell phone. Well, that's yeah, right, I, and that doesn't provide you with an alternate phone number, which was the end game with Dave's topic last week. Yeah, yeah, yeah the, the, yeah, that's right. A couple of different things there, but um, the WhatsApp, yeah, businesses in San Carlos seem to really, really like it. And um, it, it gets you away from any long distance and everything. Like if you don't have an international long distance calling free, you can make video calls, audio calls, text messages right. in your WhatsApp, and it's it's a free thing. The other thing that I was using WhatsApp for is when my niece is in Dubai, her access, like she's not allowed to use Skype. She's not allowed to use Messenger for audio calls, like Facebook Messenger. She can't use any of these different things because it's so locked down. Um, and so WhatsApp was her only choice. Well, the she other thing make WhatsApp phone calls call on it even. She could only record messages and they would come as a text, like an audio oh. file. She could not make any live calls out of Dubai. Well, well the thing is, WhatsApp is encrypted. The problem is Facebook Messenger is not encrypted. Well, it actually supports encryption, but you have to invoke it on each one of your conversations, right. whereas WhatsApp is encrypted by default. Right. I stuck the link to iPlum. It's iPlum.com. I put the link there in our chat if you want to look at it. That's the service in the app that you can download and install in your smartphone and get a U.S. phone number with whatever mm -hmm. phone you're using, whatever smartphone you're using. I also stuck another link in there from a topic Bill sent me earlier in the week about um, Japan breaking the um, fiber optic um, speed record. I don't know if you guys had a chance to look at that article, but apparently it's 119 terabytes, terabits a second. <laughs> this is very significant. Uh, because it is more than double the speed that was the top last year. So if you could just wrap your head around that for a moment, that's more than twice what was the norm a year ago. Okay, one more thing, Cheryl. If you buy a Magic Jack, Make sure you set it up at home before you leave. You cannot set it up in Mexico. I'm not set, setting up a magic jack. I'm paying AT&T for my international long distance in all three countries. So uh, I, I've got that one solution done. And I'm not relying on the Internet because a lot of our rental places in San Carlos, 
the internet has not been good enough to maintain a, a magic jack consistently. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, and, yeah, and we really were just using Magic Jack as kind of an analogy, kind of kind of an example of the kind of service that iPlum has. Yeah. I got some numbers here that are really interesting, though, from this article. It says that the previous top record was 178 terabits a second, and that was set in 2020. So, I mean, like, Moore's Law is, is hard at work even in fiber optic technology. It's seven times faster than the previous the previous speed record that that broke. That speed record was forty four point two terabits a second. <laughs> as a as a point of comparison, they used that was with some experimental photonic chip that they had. As a as a point of comparison, NASA itself uses a comparatively primitive speed of no more than 400 gigabits gigabits a second <laughs> this article is about terabits yeah. you know, a terabit is 1024 or one and actually it's 1000 1000 um gigabits terabit is 1000 gigabits so so we're talking about 319 terabits. Last year, the fastest was 178 terabits. NASA has their own fiber optic backbone and get a top speed of 400 gigabits. That's less than half a terabit. And most of us that get fiber optics from the curb to our house can only hope to achieve 10 gigabits a second. I so, just did an internet speed on our fiber optics to the pole, 43 megabytes per second. Yeah, and that's the real world number. <laughs> anyway, another thing that's really significant about this is you don't have to change the current fiber optic <coughs> infrastructure. I think we've talked about this a little bit in the past, but basically you change the modem on either end and you use the same fiber that's there in place and they're able to achieve these speeds. Scott? I think, yeah, Bill. I think that was over a very significant distance too. It was like 1,400 miles or something. Yeah, I think you're it right. Wasn't, it wasn't just inside a lab. Right, right. In fact, where is it? I just had it in front of me. It uses this thing that's, what do they call it? Wave module, wavelength. I can't remember the polarization modulation. Four, 43.5 miles or 70 kilometers. The so 919 terabits a second over 70 kilom kilometers. That's, that's like the Library of Congress total total stuff, isn't it? Bam. I think that's more than in the a, Library of Congress. In a couple seconds. Yeah. I, it would almost be simultaneous. <laughs> yeah. I tell you, all, all of my data would be simultaneous. <laughs> <laughs> But I, a good point, a reference would be that you cannot move, you can't move data inside your computer that fast. Like most of us own a computer that you could not read the file off the hard drive into the CPU that fast. That's, would there be any trouble with it coming in that fast then? It would just, yeah, if you're not careful, it'll blow the side of your computer off. <laughs> it'll blow out the back <laughs> you got to put a reinforcement shield on the back so you know and, ooh, and it, I, I think you have to wear protective uh, gear for the radiation you got to make sure you got safety goggles on while you do this yeah. no it, welding helmet it's <laughs> a welding helmet that's the most appropriate because you know it's light and so you don't want to blind anyone <laughs> Wouldn't that be funny if 
if uh, fiber optics was coming into your computer so fast you could see light coming out of the seams of the device. <laughs> funny ha ha or funny ee? -E? <laughs> Isn't 5G offering about the same thing? Uh, well, this is very specifically an increase in fiber optic technology. Um, 5G is down at hundreds up to a gigabit in speed. Hundreds of megabytes up to a gigabit in speed. This is so. This is hundred times faster than five G. Yeah, at its at its fastest, it's probably three hundred times faster. And the, and what's very significant about this, Chester, is again the infrastructure doesn't have to change. Like five G, to take advantage of of that, they have to go put new new antennas everywhere. Right, and we have to have to buy new devices, whereas the fiber optic lines that already exist, if you replace the end nodes, they can achieve these speeds. And in the article says they were testing it over, I mean, almost 50 miles, they were able to uh, achieve these speeds. So this seems like a really easy way to bring a lot more bandwidth, like right across the country. You know, we have fiber optic backbones throughout the United States. And they could, well, com uh, competitively triple the amount of data per second that could go across the United States by upgrading their equipment with this technology. This is all being studied. This isn't in the marketplace yet, but you can bet it will be very shortly. Now that the billionaires are in space. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Leave them there. Leave them there. <laughs> More like make them share. Cut, cut the cord. Yeah. Well, okay, Scott, I have a, a, sure, a, a go ahead, an in, interesting sidebar that has nothing to do with what we've been talking about. I, my uh, son That's okay, I'm done. just came back. Okay. <laughs> my, my son... Uh, it was working way up in the north in Baffin Island, which is over by Greenland. And he's working at an iron mine. And this iron mine has one of the highest concentrations of iron ore known. It's over 60% uh, iron in the ore. Uh -huh. Anyway, he brought me back a couple uh, samples when he came home. And uh, it's so high in, in concentration that magnets stick to it. Wow. And, what, and he says, mine? what's that? What is the name of the mine? Uh, Mary's River Mine. Thanks. But, but it's, uh, he says he's seen samples where the guys in the shop have been screwing around and they welded on it. It's, it's high enough you can weld with it, take weld it. That's oh. amazing stuff. And, and what is it? It's, it's iron ore? Iron ore, it's coming right out of the ground and it's so high concentrate that a magnet will stick to it. They, they probably don't have to pelletize it like they No, do they don't. They, they, they crush it, but they don't, there's no, uh, no tailings pond. Like they, they don't have to, uh, to concentrate it. It's concentrated enough. They, they, they crush it and they ship it. They put it right on the ship and it goes off to Europe. Wow. That's amazing. Well, what's the matrix? What's it in? What do you mean? Well, what's the what uh, is there besides iron? Is it like is it in a? Grid? Oh, I don't know. Hmm. Where is it? There. That's it. Oh, so it's so it's like homogenous. It's one one. Uh, yeah. One thing. Well, this is just iron ore. Well, it's sixty percent would be sixty percent iron ore, which is about what you get when you pelletize. But that, that's an awful lot of concentrating. I used to be involved in this industry and some of those mines up in, in uh, Canada. So, and then also the Iron Range in Minnesota. <clears throat> so that's, that's some wonderful stuff. I okay, there's right the ore. A blast furnace. There's the magnet. Straight in. Ooh. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Just sticks to it. It's that high a concentration. It's amazing stuff. I just, that's my sidebar. I just saw it sitting here on my desk and I figured I'll share that particular thing. Yeah. <laughs> that's very cool, Bill.
Well, I got a cool son. What do you? What can I say? Did you guys hear mom's question? And my question no. is, um, who is buying that ore? It's they're shipping most of it to Europe. It, it said. I hope Canada's getting really rich from. It. Oh shit! <laughs> probably, probably the money's going to some American firm. Oh jeez. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. It's probably going to one American guy. Who's orbiting well, the Earth, if not now, shortly? <laughs> <laughs> and it, the thing says they found it somewhat by accident. They they weren't, you know, it was a, a prospecting plane flew over it, and their compass went wonky on them. And they went back to figure to have a look at it. They they had an X Files experience. They went down yes, looking exactly. for a spaceship, and they found an ore deposit. <laughs> well, they were using they were using a magnetometer. Uh, yep. The way they found it. Hey, Bill, do you have a, a name associated with that mine? What's it called? Yeah. Mary's River. Mary's River. Mary's. Is that underground or surface? Uh, underground. It's surface. Uh, it's a uh, strip mine. And they Fine. they have a, a 200 kilometer from the mine to get it to water. They have a 200 kilometer haul road. They, they have to haul it this 200 baffin, kilometers. Baffin Island? It's yeah. in Baffin Island, yeah. The top end of Baffin Island. It's it's called uh, Baffin Land, and it's the Bullet Group. B U L L I T T. Bullet Group. Bullet Group. Out of Nevada. <laughs> www.baffinland.com. With a name like Bullet Group, it's got to be American. Baffin yeah. Land Iron Mines. Baffin Land, all one word, two Fs. B A F F I N Land. Well, Cheryl, well, I'd be you... interested to, to research that. Mary oh. River Mine. I found it. That was great. I just, I just had a Google um, suggested search pop up. They, like, we're talking about this. We're making fun of who owns it. And the first one on the suggested search is, who owns Baffinland Iron Mines? Okay, who does? What does it say? It's the very first Google suggested search. It says, Arklor Mittel. <coughs> Are you familiar with that, anyway, Chester? Beg your pardon? Jointly owned. Ark is it Arklor no. Mittel? A-R-C-L-O-R... M I T T A L. I don't know the firm. And the new iron ore. It says and the new Nunavut Nunavut, iron yeah. ore. Yeah, Nunavut. Okay. Nunavut is the is the Inuit. Uh, yeah. Well, it's a territory, uh, so the 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 government up there owns part of it. it used to be part of the uh, uh, Northwest Territories, but they hived it off. Yeah. Actually, most so, iron mines, most iron mines, because of the cost are jointly owned by numerous numerous mining companies and or steel companies. Well, and it, it says that it's jointly owned by the Energy and Minerals Corp, a group, and Arcelot Mittal. So it's it's French. That's why you're having such a hard time with it, um, <laughs> Scott. <laughs> but it's uh, I'm having it's, trouble with it because I'm American. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and most of the locations are in uh, the in, in Nubic language. I'm not sure what language it is, but yeah, it's uh, it's a little bit hard. Lots of A's and lots of double J's and you know, yeah. okay. is, is that a uh, whole road, a, an ice road, or is it open all year? Oh, no. Oh, God, no. So no, no. He, he says they... They, they they bring the ships in. They're, they're still not in right now. They stockpile the ore all all year, and then they sh uh, they have a very short shipping season that hasn't started yet. He says it won't start until August. Uh, but and then and it ends. The shipping ends in October. They have to get all their ore out in that time frame. Like in uh, a two-month window. They're they're highly regulated. The Inuit. The native people are, have a real say in what they can and can't do there. And uh, they wanted to bring icebreakers in this year to get it in earlier. And they said, don't, can't do that. You're interrupting our uh, hunting season. Okay. So they are very regulated by the, by the Inuit. 
which is not, I would say, a pretty good thing. They, they, they don't have free reign to go raping the earth. So to speak. They probably also collect a handsome royalty. Hopefully they do. But well, we need more stories like that. Less of these church burnings and and schools for the indigenous. <laughs> it's been really sad yeah, thing we... to follow. So did you see where Habitat for Humanity is going to make 3D houses? Oh, first... Linda, I just stuck a 3D topic in the bill that sent me earlier this week, a 3D bridge in Amsterdam. I see this. But I just saw yesterday that, that the Habitat for Humanity is going to make a 3D house down in Virginia. Yeah, that's cool. Do you have a link to that story? I'd like to see that. So we'll have to... Um... I, I had stuck this in. Bill had sent this to me earlier in the week. I don't know if you guys can see that, but the world's first 3D printed stainless steel bridge. It's a walking bridge, but it was built by robots that were like doing all the welding using standard yeah, they, material. They, they basically struck an arc with a TIG welder and just started building. They just built it up layer on layer with, with uh, TIG welders. How long did it take? Uh, I don't know. It might it might say in there. I forget. I read the, the thing. 24 hours. Wouldn't that be cool? Oh, oh no. More than that. <laughs> well, here it is. The actual printing process took six months and was ah. completed in 2018. But because of unforeseen delays, including waiting while the canal walls were refurbished, the bridge was only recently transported to the site by boat and then raised into position using a, tr a crane. I don't know if you guys can see, it's a pretty wild looking bridge. What I was most, I, I found most interesting, it's a walking bridge. What I found most interesting about it is that not only was it 3D printed by robots and it was stainless steel, but they incorporated sensors into it as they built it so that they can get real-time monitoring of its load capacity and be able to track what its structural integrity is. And it crosses the, the canal in the red light district. That was important. That's important too, of course. I was looking for the gallery. They had a gallery of photo. Oh, here's a picture. Of, of the, the red, red light district? district? No, of the bridge. What are we talking oh, about? Oh, 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 okay. Sorry. <laughs> Somebody's got something on his mind. There, here it is being lowered. I don't know if you guys can see that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. you can see it. Yeah, it's being lowered in the in the place. Here it is in the crane. That's the one we were looking at earlier. Here it is in place, and that's my computer acting. What what kind of a machine would it take to build a three D house? I mean, how big is that machine? Okay, well, they've got these. I just posted on the side the 3D the Habitat for Humanity. Let me bring it up. And it's in the city of Tempe, which is really interesting. Tempe, just, Arizona? Yeah, yeah, Tempe, Arizona. We could go see and, it when we're down there. The, how, the, the 3D house builders I've seen have been these structures that do um, circles <laughs> and build up um concrete surprisingly traditional looking yeah that yeah. well like have a modern house mm -hmm. there isn't enough visuals there's too much reading involved this is impromptu <laughs> computer club we want pictures <laughs> well i'm just looking at a couple of the links but it's 1,700 mm -hmm. square feet. That's a nice size for a couple yeah, of people. Here in my house. Yeah, <laughs> that's big. I wonder um, if they could crack them out and move them, or was it built in place, does it say? Build on demand printer is what she used. They called a BOD2 from mm -hmm. Germany. Found success in building small 3D printed home fraud. This home represents Habitat's new entry into innovative <coughs> Well, this looks like great reading, but I can't answer any quick questions off of the article. No, it's it's mostly about Habitat for Humanities, but I, yeah, I, I 
can't find the name of the printer to find out how big it is. Or they, they have a stat here that says that approximately 70 to 80 percent of the home will be 3D printed. Yeah. So that's yeah. probably why we see some traditional uh, architecture in it is because that's the 30 percent. Yeah, windows and doors. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it, they, they are printing parts. They're not printing the whole house. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's probably it's, a, a would work as modulars together. Yeah, smaller, smaller uh, rooms and, and Well, they're building one in, uh, they're building one in Georgia, too. But if you go on YouTube, they have all kinds of photo, all kinds of uh, videos. Well, I like that it's in Tempe because we could actually go by and take a look at yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty cool. Very cool. Hey, your backyard. My <laughs> backyard, yeah. We... There's your bodega plus apartment. <laughs> Got to get the printer there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now we can print it in Tempe and run it down the road or fly it in. <laughs> well, I'll... Well, speaking of houses in San Carlos, did you guys sell your house? Well, Sandy? We, we've signed some papers. We haven't heard anything final yet, but we have signed some. And now we're all going, oh, we're really going to miss that house. They, they've gotten so used to it not selling that we already had plans for it this season. Got Christmas plans, all kinds of plans. So we have to change What's those. the address there? It's 55 Lacoste. What's the address at that place? 55. Number five. No. no. 55 La Costa. It's right next to the tel uh, Telmex offices. It's close. It's not next. But okay. it's, it's on it's the same the street. Yeah. Oh, yeah. across from the upholstery. Across yeah. from no, across Chester's old warehouse. <laughs> across from Chester's old garage. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> Almost. Did you keep your car there, or are you? No, we can, We don't keep an automobile there. Oh yeah, no, I meant Chester. What? Oh. What did Chester have a garage for? Just uh, something big and tall. Well, Go ahead, Chester. I, I had I had substantial tools. I've always enjoyed most of my life until now working with my hands, and I've built several cars. I also had my my uh, motorhome stored there, and um, just enjoyed it. I owned it for many years, but uh, I'm, now that I'm no longer in San Carlos, I sold it. Well, Which, houses are selling fast in San Carlos. And oh. also the price is way up. It's okay. nuts. Yeah. Everything's sold. Everything is sold. It's they, They've been building because there's no more houses to sell. I've never lived there during a period like this. I've seen it once before, and uh, about uh, I'm gonna say about ten years ago. <clears throat> I don't think it was the same though. We had a lot of scams going on ten years ago. Look at the Gulf Towers or the, the yeah. those those towers on the way in from town, or the Tetakawis and the controversy of cutting in the side. This is a whole different deal. This is very legitimate uh, developing going on and. And for the first time, I don't feel like everything's for sale. I feel like everything is sold. Well, one of the things that counts for it is the fact that the wealthy Mexicans in Obregón and Hermosillo have had a hard time getting into the United States. So they've discovered San Carlos and the very good amenities that go with it, except for the supply of water. And well, internet. And electricity. And they weren't giving them loans before. Yeah, I, I agree with Chester. That I, to I totally think that, I mean, like the people that are looking at mom and dad's house, they're pretty much committed. We don't want to jinx it. Uh, they're a Mexican family. And most of yeah. the sales that have been going on have been Mexican families. Yeah. I think that's exactly it. They have not been able to easily go to the United States. So they started exploring their own vacation opportunities there in country which fits in line with kind of the the um the attitude that the president of mexico would want the citizens to feel I, 
when we when they started having issues with politically with the United States, he would get on the horn and say things like, "We need to concentrate on our businesses. We need to focus on building our economy and our education here in Mexico." and worry less about what's going on on the other side of the border. And so this is this is like a direct lineage of that kind of thinking. Okay, we can't go to the States, we can't go to Disneyland, we can't go to Vegas. Where can we go in Mexico? Well, you know, I was down there a couple weeks ago. Um, I stayed two weeks. The traffic is incredible. Yeah, it's down there. nuts. The grocery stores, if you don't go, do not go to the grocery stores on the weekend. There's so many people in the stores. Yeah. Yeah, there's people um, everywhere. I mean, we've turned right. right back into the vacation town it, it's always been. Well, I've yeah. also heard that this has occurred at the marina, that every day all of and there are more charter boats, and every day all of them are going out. So a lot of Mexican tourists and other tourists that are utilizing San Carlos. I think it's great. I just wish I had benefited from it. Well, and we'll have to see what happens because uh, they are recently re-looking at locking down because of the Delta. So this might throw a wrinkle in all that. Well, I know that they're getting people off the beaches early again. Sorry, Linda. Go ahead. The people that bought our house are Mexicans, and now they're putting in a swimming pool. Yeah. That's awesome. You know, we just got a small house. I want a pool. Awesome. Awesome for a country, for a section of country that is worried about water. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Where are they going to get the water? Right. There, um, in Mesa, at least. <laughs> Pools are being filled in and made into decking for you know, some kind of a deck. <laughs> oh, like a I patio. Yeah, like a patio. There you go. Oh, rose garden. Or a rose garden. Oh, yeah, perfect. <laughs> they don't take any water. <laughs> they fill them in to grow almond trees. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. Pecan trees. The gods, yeah, something that just takes an exorbitant amount of water. Yeah. Hey, I uh, is there? I, oh, go ahead. Is there a, a, Bye, everybody. Are you out of here? Yeah, I gotta go. I got somebody at my door. All okay. right, Linda. Bye. Okay, Linda. Okay, bye. Good seeing you, Linda. It's I'm gonna have to go as well. Hopefully, bye, see you on next week. Okay, Chester, yeah. we'll see you next week. You're looking week. well, Chester. Chester, you don't have any recommendations for me this week. <laughs> Bye bye, everybody. <laughs> You're out of here, too, Paul. All right. Well, geez, have, we're losing I everybody. Been, we're not done yet. <laughs> I've been watching Narco Mexico, which is different than Narcos. Right. Narcos. How are you liking that one? Um, it, the Narcos Mexico is, is all Mexico. And uh, uh, I, I'm enjoying it. I wish it were in English, but uh, I read the read as best i can yeah words well i need to practice my spanish so maybe i should be watching something well, like you, that. you would enjoy it it's, it's interesting the words that i do know how you hear them uh, all the time yeah well it's been over a year since i've heard spanish so uh, I, every so often on the facebook there'll be um some somebody from from san carlos doing a, a video and it is so fast, and I catch you know a couple of words, but I uh, have to get my ear tuned up before we get there in December. I would say one thing that it really brought to my attention, both of these series, is the vastness of the business. Uh, the oh, amount yeah. of money that is involved is just beyond belief. It's not just drug trade either. Like they're involved in a lot of things, aren't they? Like gambling and yeah. Primarily cocaine. Primarily co cocaine. Money is in cocaine. Yeah. It really is the transition from marijuana to cocaine. Yes, that's what. Yeah. Yeah. The narco Mexico is basically about, and the the, the uh, to this point, 
the cocaine that they're marketing into the states, they're obtaining from Colombia, from, oh, yeah. from the cartels. Hmm. Huh. Isn't it? Yeah. Uh, big problem. Well, yeah, quite a world. Yep. Adios, everyone. See you, yeah, Chester. Bye. Thanks for the recommendation. <laughs> Yeah, so is, does anybody have a grand, uh, you know, un, uncommenced uh, solution to the water problem in San Carlos? Rain. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's environmentally related. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it just, you know, like uh, the, the longest pipe for urban water apparently is uh, for San Diego. It, does, it doesn't even come from California. It's, uh, it's uh, uh, Arizona oh, water. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. Meat, so, uh, which is drying up. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, it, it, you know, though, there's those long, uh, long pipes, but it's, it, you know, that's not usually a Mexican solution. You know, it's usually a deeper well or something that they try. I'm yeah. a big fan of desalinization. I think that's the future technology that we're going to be seeing in places along the coast. Yeah, that's the big bullet we have to bite. Yeah. Are they doing something like that in Inupame? I, I I seem to recall something about three or four years ago, something about a desalination plant in in Inupame. Well, I think I and I don't have any specific information. I'm vaguely having a memory like you are. I, yeah. But I remember something like that, and I know that they've had such frustrations with the Yaki River because it's been drying up. <laughs> And then the Yaquis keep fighting for their, their rights to it. So I know there's this parallel plan to bring water from another source. I imagine mm -hmm. that's one of the, the options they've been looking at. Desalinization. Right. Yeah. yeah. I watched um, one of your recommendations, James. Um, mm -hmm. Was it called The Debt? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Did you enjoy that? that? I did. I, I really enjoyed it yeah, it great. was uh it was quite something um i binged watched it one night i think tuesday night after the club <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> so i had to look at my notes and i saw that and uh yeah the israeli um they were looking for one of the concentration camp doctors their their assignment was to bring him back to israel and uh there were a few bumps along the way but they basically um lied about it and said that they'd gotten him and uh yeah it was it was an interesting story you know a few things kind of fell apart, apart in it but it was very interesting to see yeah and i wonder uh, i didn't check to see if it had any any uh, uh uh veracity like how close to reality of some some actual thing it was i don't know yeah i don't know but uh it, it told well you know like uh, just just the way it was it, interesting how they got themselves hooked on the dilemma yeah. trying to do the the wrong thing for the best uh, right. highest yeah. reason and then uh, and getting yeah. caught <laughs> yeah. on the wrong side that again the name of its debt the debt the debt yeah the debt d e b t do I remember this right? This is a kind of a spy over generations thriller. Yes. Sort of. The, 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 the people involved are Mossad um, operatives, but it starts with their daughter telling the story. Okay. So, and uh, yeah. So, so it's a little kind of multi generational. Yeah. yeah. It takes yeah. place over decades. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we're just finishing that's up Helen, uh, Murren. Rick. Helen Murren has come up a few times over my summer watching or my 15 month addiction to Netflix. But anyways, um, uh, we, uh, Helen Murren was in that uh, Leisure Seeker. That, oh, uh, I haven't had a chance to watch that yet. Oh, you have to. Your mom has to. <laughs> Donald Sutherland and Helen Murren. Oh, wow. so, that's a good one, too. I want to see that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it, 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 okay. She's a great actor. Oh, yeah. She's amazing. And so anyway, so that one, Helen Murren, and and this one, The Debt, and I, I can't remember, but I'm going to search some more for her, you know, because yeah. I really quite enjoyed her. Oh, yeah. So That's also a fun way to discover movies, too, is to just go after a director or an actor like that and check out everything that you're doing. Well, yeah. years ago, I was addicted to Whoopi, Whoopi Goldberg. Oh, yeah. <laughs> sure. 
and, and she she did some different ones, you know. But um, yeah, she's only done political talk shows ever <laughs> for the last little while. But so you have to go back a ways to watch hers. But uh, and Jim, and you're other... saying you're just finishing up Rake, the Australian. Rake, yeah, and, and it's in it's five seasons, I think, and it's uh, there's forty uh, forty of them, and but. Like most series that go to to that many, um, it, it sort of sags in the middle, but it it uh, it finishes well. Mm. They they started. There's even uh, it went over such a long period of time, and they there it's set in um, uh, New South Wales in in uh, Australia, but they they do refer to um, current events often, and there's even a mention of Donald Trump in it to the uh, towards the end. Oh wow, it's that okay. I didn't realize it was so recent. Up to the minute. <laughs> well, I guess we haven't got those last season. Yeah. There's there's 40, 40 altogether on Netflix. So 40 Canadian, Canadian Netflix. Yeah. <laughs> Canadian Netflix. We need a VPN to Canada to watch Canadian I know. Netflix. <laughs> I know. It's, it's, it's interesting how there's some things that are in one and not the other, and it goes in both directions, you know? Yeah, it'll, it'll be interesting as we go forward. I thought that the rights distribution and licensing model would just slowly deteriorate. But you see these, these properties like Peacock or Paramount Plus, and they aren't the appropriate place to put their parent company movies sometimes. They, they're missing an opportunity of making money by making those same movies and TV shows available on Netflix and, and Hulu and things like that. And, and so we, I'm, not, I'm not seeing the licensing model disappear anytime soon. It seems to continue to move forward. Yeah. yeah. It, with the exception of places like Amazon that's making their own stuff and putting it in the movie theaters as well as on Prime, and Netflix doing the same kind of deal, putting everything on Netflix. These others, like HBO, they're kind of, or Warner Brothers, and they've got horrible streaming reputation for services, and they're not, they're not the first or second or even the third uh, subscription that people are owning. But what they can do is they can license that to Netflix to play for six months and they'll make more money through that licensing fee than they're getting from subscription. Are they doing that? Yeah, the, yeah, they're continuing to do that kind of stuff because they can't... They, who would have thought that we'd be at this point and they'd still be trying to sort out this industry? But nobody wants, nobody wants to have Netflix, Disney... HBO, I, like all these services you pay monthly for, all of a sudden you've got this bill that's higher than any cable bill you've ever had. And so people yeah. are, are doing tricks like, well, I'll take that 30-day free when such and such a series becomes available and I'll binge it and then I'll cancel it. This is the way we're behaving now. <laughs> mm. Right. I, I don't see that licensing model. I, a few years ago, I thought the licensing model would just end up disappearing because Netflix would make its content. Amazon would make its content. HBO would make its content. Everything would be distributed on there. But they're charging competitively, not a la carte. Like It would be different if you get an Apple TV box and yeah, for a buck a month, you can add HBO. For a buck a month, you can add Hulu. For, that would be a whole different world, right? Where you could have access to all that, all that content. <laughs> and you'd just be adding it kind of piecemeal to what you're doing. And they're charging competitive prices like, you should be on HBO, not Netflix. At that price, you have to choose one or the other. Well, no one's choosing the new HBO. They're always going to choose Netflix. And yeah. Amazon, I think, has got the best model because, all right, you can stop watching the movies, but you'll aren't don't you still want free shipping? It's right. That's I think Amazon's the one that's got me completely completely tied. I can't imagine leaving Amazon for anything at this point. Now I get to put all my pictures up in the cloud, unlimited space for my photos. I haven't paid anything extra. 
Even if they didn't give that to me, I'd still be getting free shipping. And there's a bunch of movies to watch at the same time. And they're making original content. I, they've got me locked in. <laughs> yes. Sounds like uh, St. Jeff. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I, it's not because I want to. <laughs> it's just because that's the way it's worked out. That's the right. Easiest way. It's, it is. It's so easy. It, it's, it's pretty hard for you to leave that. Imagine how hard it was for McKinsey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's funny. Somebody the other day was talking about the, um, the way that these billionaires, say, how we have a culture of billionaires helping people out. Like that's our socialism in the United States. Is you allow someone to get filthy rich and then they'll throw scraps at the rest of us trying to basically trying to make us forget their their previous behavior you look at bill gates or jeff bezos well jeff bezos hasn't the the comment was jeff bezos really hasn't done any of that yet maybe this space program I'm like what are you talking about he got divorced and then she gave us 40 billion dollars that's right that's, that's that's his contribution to this movement is he divorced his wife and she's the one that's giving everybody money. Yeah. Well, who divorced who? <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Takes two. Always takes two. So um, I got to get going, too. I got to take my uh, RV to the uh, diesel mechanic today. It's the big day and, and we've got it all uh, tuned up because uh, it's going to be on the road in January. Coming back to see you guys in San Carlos, but today is uh, is uh, Diesel Mechanic Day, so All right, au revoir. Jim. Thanks right, for being yeah. with us. Yeah, James, you're gonna fly over us when you go to Ottawa, hey? Y yes, we'll be waving frantically as we go past Sherwood Park there. I was gonna say you should drive through if you were driving through, you know, but uh, no. Well, no, we're gonna we're gonna fly over and uh, and uh, take our chances in the in the uh, airplane. WestJet, and uh, uh, they, they've been doing something to us. So you got to watch this, anybody who's buying tickets. Uh, they have been selling direct light tickets, to, like from we have a direct ticket from Vancouver to Ottawa, and we, we chose it advisedly and paid a little more for it and so on. But uh, th they're uh, saying, oh, that flight's been, you know, canceled or whatever, and then putting people onto flights that go to Winnipeg and then, then on to Ottawa, you know, so... You get, uh, we don't really want to bounce around the country. <laughs> Once... Going to Winnipeg. You don't want to do that. You want to go to Winnipeg, especially on the way home in January. <laughs> no, no, I, I'm trying to fight with WestJet too, because I have two companion flights that are, are you know, included in my rewards and everything. Mm -hmm. And the one was supposed to expire when we couldn't travel. Mm -hmm. So they've extended it. But now they won't let me book it online, so I'd have to oh, phone yeah. and all this kind of stuff. And well, yeah. we had we had a debt uh, that that they owed us, uh, and we, we they kept saying, "Oh, we'll give you other flights and so on," and we couldn't get it. And and then we we sort of let it lapse for a little while. And then when we did want to fly, we thought, "Okay, well, we'll you we might as well use those those uh, dollars if they're if they owe them to us." And so we went in to try and do it, and and. Uh, we realized that they actually had given us back the money. Oh. <laughs> it was on my bank account the whole time. That's right. It was in a, in a, in a month where we did a, a couple of uh, annual uh, 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 insurance for cars and things like that. And it was just a big month and it was going down and it just seemed to come out in the wash. But they yeah. said, no, no, we gave the, uh, gave the money so the the, uh, the 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 woman online got a great kick out of that with Carolyn yeah. because I'm sure she was in some Asian country. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, yeah. Anyways, anyway, so we have air, air, airlines and things like that. It's it's going to be fun. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> bye bye. Ha well, see you next week. See you, Jim. We should probably draw this meeting to a close. Fred, do you have any last minute things you want to contribute before we get out of here? I don't have any recommendations. I've been working on a house. I haven't watched anything. <laughs> yeah, the TV's been off quite a bit here. What a shame. <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't got anything. Uh, we've been doing a lot of uh, YouTube stuff. Uh, you know, that... Uh, <laughs> we watched Father Goose and... Uh, 
wackiest ship in the army, I think it was, this week. And thoroughly enjoyed both of them. Those are movies? Yeah. They're both movies. Old movies. Old movies. What was Father, this? Goose is, Father Goose is a really old movie. I, I remember that one. Yeah. I'm going to yeah. add it to my classics <laughs> list. Well, what was the the second one? The wackiest, best? Ship, wackiest ship in the army. Wackiest ship in the army. I've and enjoyed also, going back to some classic movies. It's really interesting to watch how the acting and the scripting and, and without all the CGI special effects, you got to yeah. lean on all this other stuff. There's also Mr. Roberts the is a good one. Say that again, Fred. Mr. Roberts is a good one. <laughs> Roberts. Goes to Washington? No, that's... Oh. No, that's a different movie. Mr. <laughs> Roberts is about uh, a ship in the South Pacific. And a, uh, he's not an ensign. He's one up. Lieutenant, I guess. He's a JG. JG? Anyway, he's yeah, on a, a uh, supply ship in the South Pacific. Uh with a captain that's uh, yeah, a tyrant, <laughs> and uh, it, it's it's a funny movie and uh, got a sad ending, but the it, it, it's a great movie. It's one of those that you remember. Then the what was the other one, Mister Pulver or something like that, was a follow up on Mister Roberts or Ensign, Ensign Pulver. And that was about uh, uh, the ensign that uh, was with Mr. Roberts on the same ship, who avoided anything to do with work. Uh, and uh, that one is funny also. Those those are some classic movies I like to have watched. Um, well, I'm going to add those to my classic movies list. I I got a question for your mom, Scott. Okay, yeah. Bill. Thank how, you, Fred. How long did how long did the first granddaughter hugs last? Um, they well, I'm still getting them. <laughs> it's really exciting <laughs> and they're long yeah they're really deep long hugs it feels so good <laughs> yeah uh, we know the feeling yeah it feels like it's just been a long time it's been great to be here with my folks and helping yep. my buddy with his house yeah that's been very your mom's computer i want to know how you fixed your mom's computer no, I'm, no. The, I'm still the cobbler's child <laughs> i haven't had a chance to get to it they've got a fire stick they want me to set up as well and i've just been stripping paint off of the house for three days <laughs> moving stuff and cleaning i was washing carpets yesterday <laughs> stuff anyway, i didn't I gotta know go. they knew how Bye, Bill. I got to go. They got Amazon, uh, Amazon delivery. I got to go play now. Oh, yeah. All you right. got to go. <laughs> yeah, get out of here. Go find out what's in that box. <laughs> Cheryl, we'll touch base again. Oh, all right. Goodbye, Bye. Cheryl. Never mind. <laughs> I thought it was Bill that left. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was Bill that had to leave, too. Fred, we'll see you next week. For Bye, sure. Fred. All right. Adios. Have a good week. You, too. Tech on. <laughs> So this is Scott Stimson and his mom, Sandy. We're here in Anchorage. This is where we're doing the club from. And just here to talk about tech topics every Tuesday. We get started at 10 o'clock Arizona time, but it is 9 o'clock Alaskan time. And so that's throwing, a little, throwing us off a little bit, throwing me off a little bit. As well as I've got handicapped equipment, what I'm working with. I'm not in the studio anymore. Until next Tuesday, you guys have a great week and tech on. Get out of this meeting. Got too many things. I'm trying.
Yeah. Why not? Oh. <laughs> Driving me crazy. I look old and fat. <laughs> and my ear, the only way I could hear is if I held right here. Otherwise, I, there was. Oh, I wonder if there's a short in your yeah, headset. I'm sure there is. There's well, I've got to use headsets. Otherwise, the microphone.